Hey, hello and welcome. I'm joined by Dylan Hood, who is a former summer analyst trainee that we had back in 2021. And I've kindly asked him to join me on the call just to catch up really and, and understand what Dylan's been up to. Uh, I know Dylan, you're, you're still studying at the moment. So, so yeah. I guess to kick this off, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, where you're studying at the moment? So yeah, I'm. Uh, my name's Dylan, as Anthony mentioned, and I'm currently in my second year at Loughborough University, and I study politics and economics. Um, and I think kind of maybe the best way to start off is just to explain kind of um, maybe like why I chose that course and why I uh, kind of how it's led me to where I am now. Um, so originally it was I'd, I'd wanted to go down a kind of professional sport route, um, and that's why I kind of came to Loughborough University. And uh, I came to, to the uni kind of in the midst of COVID. And that was where I kind of really found a bit, a bit of a passion for markets. That sounds a bit cliche. It's uh, kind of the volatility and stuff. I, I kept seeing um, kind of news articles on the FT, et cetera. And that's when I kind of became involved. And, and from there, I, um, yeah, I just, uh, I kind of took steps to build my, um, interest in markets and a few kind of work related opportunities and I saw Amplify and thought that looked kind of a great way to spend my my first year summer um because I knew I'd be applying for internships and uh and yeah I was uh went through the vigorous application process and, and was lucky to land a, a placement with a firm uh, called Lazard and I'm uh that's kind of where I am now Okay, cool. Well, uh, why don't we um, so go back to, to Amplify? What was it, um, if there was like just a, one or two things that you found that were most kind of beneficial for you, and particularly then the, the path you ended up going down with Lazard, um, was there anything that particularly resonates now that was useful? Uh, yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing that I took away um, was definitely kind of what I learned in some of the group exercises. So I'm very interested in uh, or what I'm going into is, is M&A um, and a lot of the group exercises where we were kind of creating like pitch decks was something that I found really interesting and there are a few people on the on the uh, course who had a little bit more experience than I did and it was great to kind of learn from those people and implement implement small changes um, and yeah kind of build some some great pitch decks and then um, pitch those to obviously the, the 60 or 70 other people I was on the course with, um, which was a really great experience. Um, and then definitely some of the more technical things. So building the DCF and the, uh, the LBO models is kind of an essential thing that you need to know how to do for, for the kind of technical side of interviews. Um, so having real step-by-step -step kind of walkthroughs of those um, from Eddie was really great um, and was definitely something I talked about in interviews. Mm. And, I, and I know just just before this call, you were mentioning about um, you're doing a you're going to be doing a placement year, and I know doing a placement year, the, probably the opportunities are are fewer just because most people just do a summer internship. So securing that twelve months placement is, is quite unique. So how how was that process for you? I mean, certainly landing a a role at Lazard as well. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a it was a very kind of similar process, I think, to the the summer um, internship applications. Um, but I think if anything, it was it was perhaps kind of slightly less on the technical side, because I think when you're there for 12 months, they can kind of, they can afford to teach you kind of early on some of the stuff, um, some of the more technical things that you need to know. Um, so I think it was, yeah, it had all the kind of standard interview stages, but it was very kind of interpersonal, I think. and. Kind of again going back to some of the experiences that I, I had from Amplify, just kind of working within like different teams, um, rotating around different teams, speaking to different people. Um, I think again that's something like kind of tangible experience of doing that was definitely something I could kind of take into the uh, to the assessment centres um, mm -hmm. and kind of maybe make myself stand out a bit. And I, and I remember you and I having a couple of chats along the way, and I know that for for everyone that you know securing that that placement is never an easy thing so mm -hmm. how how was that in terms of for you personally going through that because i'm assuming that there were rejections as well as the role that you got right yeah yeah oh there were there were plenty of rejections yeah of course <laughs> i think that's kind of something everyone goes through um kind of through applying and it is 
I remember one firm I did a kind of um, a, a two hour maths and English test and it took, it took ages to get through. And like 10 minutes later, I got an email saying, sorry, you, you've been rejected from the role. And there are kind of a lot of moments like that, which are really, um, yeah, they can kind of quite easily get you down and you maybe think like, oh, is it, is it worth it? But it's, um, I, I don't know, it's just, <laughs> sounds cliche, but it's just like seeing the positives in those things. And it's like, right, I didn't get through that, but th these are like X, Y, Z skills that I've been able to learn, I've been able to forward. I could then use for the kind of next application and um I think by the end of it 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 had kind of got to the stage where I kind of done a certain amount where I just had those skills that I could just pass from one straight onto the other um so I think definitely it's it is a bit of a kind of numbers game but it does really help you to have done like lots of applications and kind of have that experience mm. now I saw on your your LinkedIn that you you're quite actively writing blogs. Uh, I saw one for Motley Fool, which is like one of yeah. the biggest financial blog sites in the world. So how did yeah. that come about and, and what what benefit have you got out of, out of doing that? Um, so that's something that I've, uh, I've been doing for kind of quite some time now. And it was kind of initially something that I, I did in my first year. Um, and again, I, I applied for and, and kind of through keeping up with the markets, it, it just kind of made sense to kind of do that work alongside my uni work um and but that but that's something that's definitely really helped me because kind of having those arc articles which i uh, which i write really forces me to keep up with everything that's going on in the markets and then obviously going into kind of that world i think that really helped me um a few of the kind of technical questions about how to value um, stocks and kind of based on other stocks and financial ratios and things like that just keeping up with those and just kind of writing writing those on a regular basis um, is something which definitely really helped me um, and plus it's just it is something that I'm really interested in so you know we've got the um, kind of everything going on in the world right now it, it really directly filters kind of into markets and it's, it's interesting to kind of keep up with everything so yeah, it's been a, a really great experience, definitely. So, so with, with the, the writing that you've been doing for a while, then you did the Amplify experience and now doing the, the placement you will be going on. Like, mm -hmm. It seems like you were fairly sure in the area because there seems to be a lot of equity-based research type activities and then M&A, yeah. IBD. Was that always quite clear to you or was it not always like that? Um, I think... I think it's for me it kind of has it has always been quite clear mm. um i actually did a i, I mean when I, I like i said when i first came to uni i thought I, I wanted to pursue professional sport and it was through speaking to um a flatmate who had he'd done a, a year's placement in asset management and that was my first kind of like flavor into what a bank is how it works and he could kind of explain the different um the different divisions in the bank and just through kind of going away having a bit of general research and i just think like m a from what i could kind of see really suited my kind of interest and my skill set almost um because I, I don't know as kind of sad as it may sound I, I do really enjoy putting decks together um that kind of i don't know more perhaps my slightly more creative side of it of kind of putting stuff together coupled with kind of you know speaking to people kind of client facing role um as well as the technical stuff which i mentioned and it kind of seemed to like knit all of those things together um and again i, I had some experience through doing um, an m a competition with loughborough finance and investment society and that kind of gave me more insight and i guess just kind of all the experiences that i'd done kind of came together um and yeah, I, I just, uh, I kind of decided that this is what I want to do. Um, let's try and build some skills to, to really make myself stand out in the interview, pro interview process. And, and it kind of went from there. Now, like Loughborough now, I know just generally ranking wise, it's gone up and up and up over time. So yeah. When I went to university. So how, how has that been for you? Because I know, uh, obviously it's a top uni, it's not, a traditional catchment one like an LSC, UCL, has that ever been a, a thing that's come up or you found a challenge or? Um, I think kind of, I think for a few, 
I, I did kind of apply and just get like a straight rejection. And I think a few of the firms still do have that traditional, the kind of, like you said, the catchment of like LSE, UCL, your kind of big finance unis. But I think kind of the industry more broadly now is definitely moving towards kind of realizing that people from loads of different backgrounds actually have some kind of really great skills to offer. I think kind of more broadly, that's something which I was wary of because my, my degree is predominantly politics based. Um, so I think that's, again, perhaps not like a traditional kind of route into investment banking. Um, but I think that in a way it can almost like make me stand out because I have, I've kind of, I keep up with the finance side of it outside of uni, um, but I can kind of build maybe some other kind of writing analytical skills throughout, throughout my degree. Um, and yeah, like you said, Loughborough is kind of climbing the rankings at the moment, which is, um, which is great as well. But I guess it's kind of trying to have that mindset of, okay, maybe this can make me stand out as opposed to like hold me back. And you mentioned sport a few times. Yeah. The sport. Well, so I was going to say that, that, that was, I mean, that's the only, I, I mean, Loughborough is, is a great union. Um, it, it was a great choice uh, to, to come to Loughborough, but it was predominantly for the sport that I came. Mm. Um, I swum okay. um, kind of from like 10 all the way up until I was 19 um, to kind of, yeah, national, um, international level. Um, I represented uh, represented England. And then I, in my gap year, actually, before university, I switched over to rowing. Um, I was kind of landed a, um, a, landed a position. I'm, I'm, I'm already going into the finance, <laughs> the finance lingo. Um, yeah, I basically went onto a program, a, a GB rowing program, and I did that for about a year and a half, um, which was again kind of at that high elite level um, mm. of sport. But it was a kind of combination of the pandemic and, and not being able to train, and kind of again, it was finding this passion for markets and finance, and then kind of seeing that whole world that I'd never really considered before. Um, and yeah, it was just a kind of natural decision that I thought actually, um, you know, this is what I, this is what I want to do. Um, instead of the professional sport and and yeah that's kind of led me to where I am now so having had like 10 years of what sounds like elite level sport yeah at least at the tail end of that what's been like a transferable you think skills that you you you're able to apply now in the finance world sense if any um yeah so I, I think definitely for me the biggest thing is just kind of being able to manage workloads um because I've kind of since yeah since about 12 or 13 I've I've probably done going on about 30 hours a week of sport of training so kind of now having it's almost like I have like an extra 30 hours a week to kind of do all of my stuff outside of uni um but aside from that it's definitely time management well, that was the big one that I kind of got across in all of my all of my interviews because it was a question that did come up it was kind of how 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 can you use your sport transferable skills mm. but i think definitely the time management is a big one and kind of creating plans being diligent kind of getting stuff down to a t and that's that's something personally which really works for me really helps me um get tasks done is definitely the kind of creating a plan and the time management side of things so i think that's probably the big one um aside from yeah, just, just general commitment and kind of hard work ethic. Yeah, cool. Well, look, I really appreciate you taking the time out um, to, yeah. to talk with me. And look, uh, you start in August, is that right, at Lazard? Yes, yeah, late August, yeah. Okay, well, cool. Keep us keep us posted how that goes. Do. I'm sure we'll yeah. stay in contact. And I'm sure if anyone yeah. wants to reach out to you, they can reach you on, on LinkedIn. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, LinkedIn is, yeah, LinkedIn's perfect. So just Dylan Hood on LinkedIn. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. Cool. Well, all the best for the placement and uh, and not forgetting your studies as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still got exactly. to get the job done. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. All right, Dylan. Good to catch up and take care. Cool. Nice to speak to you. Cheers. Right.